Hello and welcome to Round Robin. I'm your host, Robin McCormick with the City of Hampton. And today we are going to talk about something you may or may not be familiar with, the Sankofa Projects. My guest is the head of that, Shadra Pittman-Walk. Welcome. Thank you. Thank How you for having you? me. I'm great. I'm great. Thank you for having me here today. I, you know, when I first met you, I thought this was a thing you did once a year. Okay. But this is really an ongoing project for you. It a is. huge commitment. It's, yeah, it's... The Remembrance Ceremony is our annual event. We do all sorts of programs throughout the year, educational and cultural programs, but the Remembrance Ceremony is an international day of remembrance that happens on the second Saturday in June across the United States and really the world. And Shader, what are we remembering? Yes, okay. <laughs> we haven't introduced that part yet. Okay, well, let me do this. Let me read a little excerpt from uh, Arma because this is going to help contextualize what remembrance is. Okay. This is a book that was written in the 1970s, and Arma um, was from Ghana, and he says that remembrance has not escaped us. Trapped now in our smallest self, we repositories of the remembrance. We, the black people, the remembrance is of a harsh time, a horror time filled with pain, and it was left up to the women to begin the work of the healing. Now, the reason why I read that is because the person who actually started this notion of remembrance is a woman, and her name is Toni Cade Bambara. She was an author and an activist um, in the 70s, and she was at a storytellers conference in Brooklyn, New York, at uh, Megar Evers College, and she said, you know, we don't honor our ancestors. We don't have a day where we think about them. You know, what about those African bodies that are in the briny deep? What about all those Africans who jumped into the Atlantic Ocean to resist being enslaved during the Middle Passage? So from that statement, uh, in 1989, they hit their first tribute to the ancestors in Coney Island. And that's a day where people come together, they drum, they dance, they pour libations, they celebrate the culture, they honor the ancestors that never got a proper burial. And from New York, the ceremony has grown. So we are now in Hampton, Virginia. We are in Charleston, South Carolina. We are in Oakland, California. We're in Alabama. We're in Nigeria and Panama. It has grown to be an international day of remembrance where we're honoring the millions of Africans who um, either were thrown into the Atlantic Ocean during slavery or who jumped as an act of resistance. Or who died on a boat. I or mean, who oh died my gosh. On the, boat. the statistics. You know, okay, here's the thing. We we talk about the slavery part of our history, not enough. Right. <laughs> We're right. very uncomfortable with it. Right. But we, we acknowledge it. Right. And I think there's been a lot of acknowledgement of African roots and different countries in Africa where people came from. But this whole part in the middle, the how they got here, we don't talk about that. We really don't talk about it. And it's interesting because it is that Middle, it's the connection. It's that middle passage, right? right. right. It is what and connects. It's called middle passage. Right. right. It connects w one part of the story to the next. Uh, and I just want to touch on something. You said that it's uncomfortable, and I'm glad that you said that because it is. Oh yeah. You know, I've been doing presentations around slavery for a very long time for my work with the African Burial Ground Project, and usually people are either ashamed or they feel guilty about it. You know, there's those two conflicting feelings, and the reality is. Just like we celebrate 9-11, just like we talk about the Holocaust and Wounded Knee and all these terrible things that have happened, we have to talk about slavery because it's the foundation for the wealth in the Western world. I mean, had it not been right. for 400 years of free labor, this country wouldn't be as great as it is. And really, globally, when you look at the impact that slavery has had, you know, um, it deserves our attention, and, and people need to talk about it, and we need to move beyond the uncomfortable place and talk about these things, because these people help to shape the country that we live in. Right, and by, you know, white guilt or discomfort right. means that you're not talking, but you're not honoring, you're not right. really ever reconciling the feelings, the mixed, the very, very mixed feelings that that people have. Absolutely, absolutely. And there are a lot of feelings. And you know, when I go out and I do presentations, you know, people have a wide array of feelings. You know, that's the beautiful thing about remembrance. We have a diverse group of people that come out for remembrance. I remember our first year of remembrance, I got a phone call from a woman who said that I'm not of African descent, 
but I'd really like to come to the ceremony. And so she said, I want to know, am I welcome to come? And I said, does the story move you mm -hmm. of the Middle Passage and what they went through? Uh, and she said, yes. And I said, well, then come. You know, I want you to know, you know, it's not, slavery is not a story of African-American history or just, you know, um, it's a story that everyone can learn something from. I want children of all ethnicities to know about the triumphs and the challenges and the accomplishments of the Africans that came here, because they did amazing things, amazing things. Well, and it gets to, you can't understand the culture that we have today, both the artistic culture, the musical culture, I mean, a lot of those wonderfully positive things, but also it, it ties into our discomfort about today's, you know, racial tensions. Absolutely. And if you don't understand and talk about what's underneath, you never get this fixed. Well, you never get it fixed. And, you know, Nina Simone has a quote that says, you know, slavery has never been erased from the American consciousness. Um, and in part, people, like you're saying, you know, people don't want to talk about it. People have apprehensions about talking about race, but the reality is there are some deep-seated issues in this country that we have to face. And I think, in part, it's why the country is in the state that it is today. I mean, racial tensions are really high. And why is that? You know, you have people saying, oh, well, you know, well, we don't want to talk about reparations. We don't want to talk about X, Y, and Z, but, but why not? You know, if you have people who toiled for that many years, and then after slavery, there was Jim Crow, which right. prohibited Africans from doing everything. Right, doing all the rights uh, they Doing all the have. things that, you know, you Voting, would do as a... Eating at a restaurant. Well, you yeah. know, so Jim Crow. And then after that, you have the civil rights. So after... So it wasn't just slavery. There's a continual um, history of oppression and discrimination. And so we have to tackle those issues. We do nothing by hiding behind a smoke screen and seeing the pink elephant and saying, oh, it's not over there. We really have to. I think for us to recognize our shared humanity, because at the end of the day, the thing that we have in common is that we're all human mm -hmm. and we come from different ethnicities. We bring different cultures to the table. And in order for us to be able to have real conversations, we have to talk about it. We have to talk about the pains of the past and move beyond the discomfort. So, Shader, give people a, a little history lesson on what that what that voyage was like. What the you know, being captured, right. being on the ship. I mean, what was that like for people? And I know you can't tell the no, whole of story course, here, of but course. a sense of that. Absolutely. Well, you know, um, from the beginning, when Africans were captured, um, there was resistance, and that's one of the untold stories that Sankofa likes to tell because there is this belief somewhere that Africans were docile and they, you know, they uh, just took slavery on and they didn't resist. And that's not true. From the shores of Africa, people resisted. When they got on the boat, they resisted. Um, once they got off the boat and here into the Americas and beyond, they resisted. There were all these insurrections. There's Denmark Vesey, there's Nat Turner. Um, all these people who said, no, I'm resisting, I'm resisting slavery. Um, uh, there's a book by, um, that was written by uh, a man who was actually on the enslavement ship, and he talks about the voyage, and he says that he, th that the smell was unbearable, that Africans were laid in such a way that they had less room to move than a person in a coffin, that um, people were chained next to each other so that, and think about this, so you're chained next to someone, someone dies, you're on a three-month voyage. With very little food. With very little, very food, little water, no sanitation. Very little water, no the movement. environment, no movement, no ability to move. You have pregnant women who are giving birth. All of your body functions are happening as they do. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, you think about that that voyage. And then what you had were, you know, Africans were discarded. You know, they would be, uh, they would say, okay, well, this ship, you know, we're going to get rid of this, that, and the other. It wasn't only the sick that were thrown overboard. It was the healthy. Well, the resistors. Probably. It was the resistors, the, absolutely. The ones, who caused the ones that, exactly, mm -hmm. exactly. Um, the freedom fighters, those were the ones that were thrown. But it was also the healthy ones that were also thrown. But then also, 
Africans jumped because they felt that to remove themselves, to jump into the water, was not considered death as we see it today, but it was, it was in a sense, um, going back to Africa. Um, the waters uh, were taking them back home. So it was a horrendous, horrendous voyage. And, um, you know, the fact that some of them survived, you know, is a miracle. Mm -hmm. It really is a miracle. Mm -hmm. But I wanted to tell you, you know, when, when we were talking about this whole international coalition, um, we actually have an international coalition now that has formed. Um, it's the International Coalition to Commemorate the African Ancestors of the Middle Passage. And the group, I'm part of the founding group, we are based in all these different places. And we are coming together to acknowledge this history and to try to bring other people into this notion of remembering our ancestors. Because the reality is when you know where you come from, Marcus Garvey says that, when you know where you come from, when you have a sense of your history and culture, and especially for children, it gives them such a sense of worth. To know that you come from kings and queens or you come from people who have done things, it's a very different story than when someone's telling you that your history began with slavery. Right. And in so many ways, you know, that's the way the culture tried to shape. That was the beginning of the dehumanization. Absolutely. The, you know, disposability of human beings. Right. And, and it had to have broken the spirit of Absolutely. so many people that they were different by the time they got here. Of course. And then through the slavery process. Right. So, Okay, so you have an event once a year where we can all go, and, and it's a public event where we, where we remember. Yes, yes, And yes. that happens? That happens. Again? It's the second Saturday in June um, annually. So this year it's going to be, well, in 2016, it's going to be June 11th, and it happens at Buckrow Beach. Um, we encourage everyone to come out and bring your lawn chairs <laughs> and some water, because usually it's very hot out there. But it's a day of... Remembrance. It's a day where we honor our ancestors. We um, provide historical presentations. Um, we had uh, Dr. Uh, Mary Christian actually came to Remembrance one year and gave a moving presentation about what it felt like to be an African man, woman, and child. And, uh, you know, she's in her 90s and she is such a pillar in this community. And when she agreed to being the keynote speaker, it meant so much. So, so many people come out. You know, the mayor has come out to support the event. Mm -hmm. um, we have different performers that come out. We have Ubuntu Dance Collective, who has danced uh, three years consecutively. And, and we have the Wyanoke Association, um, and poets, and um, our, our spiritual guides, um, Dar uh, Ogunjimi, um, comes out and he pours a libation. The interesting thing about the libation, the pouring of the, of the water, is that the libation happens at 12 noon in all of these places. Oh. So we may be in Hampton, someone may be in Nigeria, someone may be in South Carolina, but at 12 noon we're all pouring the libation together as a communal act of remembering these ancestors. That sounds wonderful. Yes, it is wonderful. Okay, so we're gonna do that in June. Yes. But also during the year, you are educating people, working on events. You know, what are some ways that people could either get involved or learn more yeah. if, if this piques their interest? Absolutely, absolutely. We offer drum classes. So if you're interested in African drumming, we have that. We have um, amazing drummers um, that we work with, Dimitri Clausen um, and um, An Pousseau who are master drummers. They're amazing at their, at their craft. We have educational programs uh, where we do uh, programs. Uh, this past year, we did one on Malcolm X. We did a program on Pearl Bailey. We did a program on actually a reception for Katherine Johnson. Um, and uh, you know, I always tell people, you know, if you know who Neil Armstrong is, you should know who Katherine Johnson is. She was known as a human computer. And we did a reception to honor her. She was being featured at the Hampton History Museum in their um, exhibit, The Truth About Women. And so we do all sorts of events throughout the year. Uh, for children, we do Kwanzaa events. So if people are interested, they can find us on uh, Facebook, the Sankofa Projects, look for our page there. Um, or they can uh, call us. I can give you the number. Um, okay. It's 757-816-1579. <laughs> and they can get more information there. All right. Well, thank you so much for coming by today. Thank you so much. And I just want to say, um, you know, this remembrance ceremony would not be possible 
without the incredible support that we have of the community. All the people who participate in Remembrance give of their time freely. There is no great budget that we say, hey, we're going to pay people. People come and they give of their time and their energy. Um, and we've also had the great partnership of the Hampton History Museum, who's been outstanding and has supported this event. So, Good. Glad yes. to hear it. Thank you, and thank, thank you, you for all you do as a volunteer as well. Absolutely, it's not like you're making a big salary. No, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. But this is, you know, this is this is the the heart's work. You know, mm -hmm. helping people remember who they are. There's nothing like that when you see that light bulb go off. Wonderful. Thank you, Shadra. Thank I appreciate you. it. Thank you. And thank you for watching. If you haven't heard of the um, International Day of Remembrance, I hope you have learned something and might join us in June. Thanks for watching.